Hello everyone, my name is Jean-Christophe Claudin. I am the ITTO Statistical Assistant and today I'm going to present an overview of the international tropical timber markets. My presentation will be divided in five parts and I will start by a brief presentation of the International Tropical Timber Organization and its statistical work. The second part will be an overview of the trade of tropical primary wood products. The third part will be an overview of the major tropical exporters of furniture. The fourth part, I will present the factors which are affecting and which will affect the trade and the production of tropical wood products in the future. And finally, the fifth part will be about the overview of the ITTO statistical publications, which can be a good help on the production and the trade of tropical wood products. Let's start by a brief presentation of the International Tropical Timber Organization. International Tropical Timber Organization is an intergovernmental organization which promotes the sustainable management and conservation of tropical forests. ITTO has 74 members, which represent about 90% of the global tropical timber trade and more than 80% of the world's tropical forest. ITTO promotes the expansion and diversification of international trade in tropical timber from sustainably managed and legally harvested forests. ITTO, over 30 years of experience, has funded and assisted in the implementation of more than 1,200 various projects. Let's see now the ITTO statistical work. The International Tropical Timber Agreement of 2006 specify what the organization must collect in terms of data on the production and trade of timber and we must be collecting information on the production and trade of industrial roundwood, sandwood, veneer and plywood. The ITTA, the International Tropical Timber Agreement, also specifies what tropical timber is and this is basically the tropical wood which is grown or produced under the tropics. Basically, ITTO will consider any non-coniferous timber grown under the tropics as tropical. So the definition of tropical timber for ITTO is basically a geographical definition of the type of timber that we must be collecting information on. Let's see now how ITTO collects statistical information. ITTO collects information through a joint forest sector questionnaire. This questionnaire has been developed by four international organizations, which are Eurostat, FAO, ITTO, and UNEC. And basically, we send the same questionnaire to 192 countries. This work has allowed us to standardize definitions of timber products. We have been working intensively at the international level to standardize definitions and we also have been working with the World Customs Organizations which releases the harmonized system. In 2017, we included a detailed list of tropical species in the annex of chapter 44. These are the major tropical species which are traded in the world. We also published a tropical timber atlas, which can be found by clicking on this link. What is the use of tropical timber? There are different end uses for this type of timber. Furniture is one of them. As we can see on these pictures I took in Vietnam, 
This furniture, made of tropical timber, had heavily carved backrests and armrests. This picture of furniture made of tropical timber is favored in Asia, particularly in Vietnam and China. These are usually expensive furniture made of rare tropical timber. The second type of furniture is furniture which is produced in Asia and then exported to advanced economies such as the US or the EU. I took the picture on the left in the US in Costco. These are benches and chairs made of teak. Prices are relatively cheap and design is simple. On the right, I took the picture of an acacia made chair in a Vietnamese factory which exported furniture to the US. Tropical timber in sunwood and plywood form is also used for construction purposes. I took the left picture in Ethiopia in a plywood factory which was labor intensive due to outdated machines. The picture on the right was taken in China in a plywood factory. Construction firms typically use sheets of plywood as molds when pouring concrete, after which they are discarded. Japan is an important importer of tropical plywood, as we will see later, as it imports mainly its tropical plywood from Malaysia and Indonesia. There are concerns about deforestation. The third use of tropical timber is paper production. According to FAO stat, paper production under the tropics represents 12% of the total production of paper in the world. There are three major tropical producers of paper, India, Indonesia, and Brazil. As for the plywood production, the production of paper from acacia plantations has an effect on deforestation, as stated in this Nature article. Finally, tropical logs can be used for poles, fencing, etc. In our questionnaire, this use of tropical logs is referred as other industrial roundwood. While this category represents roughly 12% of all tropical industrial roundwood, it is particularly important in African countries, and this share can reach 70 to 80% of all tropical industrial roundwood in those countries. As we can see on this picture that I took in Ethiopia, vendors of poles are along the road. Let's see now the major producer of tropical industrial roundwood from 2010 to 2020. The Asia Pacific region produces twice more tropical industrial roundwood than the African and Latin American regions combined. The total production of tropical industrial roundwood is roughly 15% of the world total production of industrial roundwood. Indonesia is the world's largest producer of tropical logs, followed by India and Vietnam. At this point, it is difficult to estimate the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on production and domestic consumption of tropical logs. For 2020, we conservatively forecasted a drop in production of 10 million cubic meters in the tropical countries, which represent a decline of 2 or 3 percent. The figure will certainly be revised in the future. Let's see now the world imports of tropical primary wood products from 1990 to 2020. Tropical logs were mainly imported in Japan in the 1990s. In 1990, Japan imported 40% of all tropical logs. With the economic burst in the 1990s, Japanese imports started to dwindle strongly. Then the world went through three major economic shocks, Asian crisis in 97-98, the global financial crisis in 2008, and the 2020 COVID-19 crisis. Tropical logs re imports recovered very quickly after the Asian crisis of 97-98, but took four years to recover from the 2008 crisis. After reaching a high point in 2014, tropical logs imports started to decline, and this decline accelerated strongly from 2018, partly due to the economic slowdown in China. The COVID-19 crisis has amplified the economic slowdown in China, and the volume of tropical logs traded in the world reached its 30-year lowest point in 2020. In 1990, 30% of all industrial roundwood exported in the world was of tropical origin. Nowadays, this share is only 
around 9%. Tropical sunwood imports have been impacted as well by economic crisis. Nevertheless, unlike tropical logs imports, the total imports of tropical sunwood were at the same level in 2020 as they were in 1990. Tropical sunwood is still largely consumed in the world these days. As for the industrial tropical roundwood, global imports were also affected by Chinese slowdown over the last couple of years and accelerated by the COVID-19 situation. In 1990, the share of tropical sunwood in the total imports of sunwood was around 12%. This share has been divided by two, 6%, in 30 years. Tropical plywood now was mainly imported in Japan in 1990, and the world imports was driven by Japanese imports, which have been strongly dwindling since the 2008 crisis. Japanese imports have been divided by two since 2008, and the global tropical plywood imports have never recovered since. Nevertheless, as global imports already reached a low point, this product has been less affected than tropical logs and sunwood by the current COVID crisis. 75% of plywood imports in 1990 were tropical plywood. This share has decreased strongly as tropical plywood represents only 25% of all plywood imports these days. Let's see now the effects of a crisis like COVID-19 on tropical timber products versus all timber products. As we can see on this table, tropical logs were more affected in volume and in value than all logs. While in 2020, all industrial roundwood trade declined by 5% in volume and 13% in value, tropical logs trade declined by 16% in volume and 30% in value. Tropical sunwood and plywood were less affected than tropical logs, but more affected than all sunwood and all plywood trade. In terms of overall value of trade, primary tropical wood products exports declined by 16% in value, while all primary wood products exports declined by 10%. Let's see now the major importers of tropical logs from 2010 to 2020. China is the biggest importer of tropical logs in the world. It imports two-thirds of the world's tropical logs. Since 2018, its demand has been strongly on the decline, and in 2020, its imports reach its 2012 level after reaching a high point in 2014. Imports declined by almost 3 million cubic meters between 2008 and 2020. India is the second largest importer, and its demand has also been declining over the last decade. In 2020, India imported a little more than a third of what it imported in 2011. India was particularly affected by the COVID-19 crisis, as its ex imports almost divided by two between 2019 and 20. Vietnam is the third importer of tropical logs. Its imports expanded rapidly to reach a peak in 2016, but demand for tropical logs has slowed down since and have been replaced progressively by temperate hardwoods. Indonesia is the fourth most important tropical log importer in the world. Its imports are mainly plantation species from Malaysia, particularly acacia species used for paper production. Overall, Asia Pacific imports 97% of the world tropical industrial roundwood, whether this is through inter-regional trade, or from other regions, particularly Africa. Let's see now the major exporters of tropical logs from 2010 to 2020. As we can see on this graph, PNG and the Solomon Islands are the largest exporters of tropical logs. Combined, they represent almost 50% of the world exports of tropical industrial roundwood. But they are highly dependent on the Chinese demand. Their exports were strongly affected by the COVID-19 crisis and declined by 23 and 17 percent respectively in 2020. As we can see on this graph, Brazil became the third tropical log exporters in 2020. 
Unlike all major exporters, which saw their exports declining by a two-digit percentage in 2020, Brazil remains an, ex an exception as it has experienced a huge acceleration of its exports of logs, which, by the way, were negligible until 2015, to reach 1.3 million cubic meters in 2020. These logs mainly went to China and Portugal. Malaysia is the fourth biggest exporter of tropical logs in the world. Malaysia was the major exporter, historically, of tropical logs. It exported 20 million cubic meters of tropical logs in 1990, roughly 71% of the world total. As we can see, in 2020, Malaysia exported just over a million cubic meters. So its exports really declined over the last 30 years. The peak reached by the rest of the world aggregate in 2014 is explained by the surge in exports by Myanmar prior to the enforcement of a log export ban. Myanmar exports plummeted to insignificant levels from 2015 when the ban was introduced. As we can see on this 2020 map, most major flows of tropical logs go to China. PNG and the Solomon Islands are the main suppliers to China. Combined, they represent 54% of China's imports. From 2018, China has been importing significantly more logs from Brazil, whose exports to China doubled between 2019 to 2020. In 2020, Brazil was the third supplier of tropical logs in China. Now we can see the effect of the economic slowdown and COVID-19 on log prices. For example, on this graph, West Africa log prices were already deeply affected by the economic slowdown in China in 2019, and the effect has been exacerbated in 2020 by the COVID-19 crisis. The ITTO West Africa Export Price Index has dropped 10% over the last two years, and prices are now 5% lower than in January 2015. Let's see now the major importers of tropical sandwood from 2010 to 2020. China is the largest importer of tropical sandwood. It represents 63% of the world imports. After reaching a high point in 2017, its imports started to decline from 2018. In 2020, its imports started to strongly decline during the first semester, but strongly rebounded during the second semester and finally, China imported more tropical sandwood in 2020 than in 2019. The EU is the second largest importer of tropical sandwood, and its imports declined only by 4% in 2020. Vietnam is the third largest importer of tropical sandwood in the world, as China, its imports surged in 2020 by 15%. The other major importers experienced a double-digit percentage decline in 2020, and particularly the rest of the world aggregate was affected, as it decreased by a third. Despite declining world imports since 2017, tropical sunwood has been more resilient to COVID-19 crisis than tropical logs. Let's see now the major exporters of tropical sunwood from 2010 to 2020. The situation of the major exporters of tropical sunwood has been diverse over the recent years. Thailand, the biggest exporter of tropical sunwood in the world, experienced just a decrease of 1% of its exports in 2020. Despite its strong dependence on the Chinese market, more than 90% of its sunwood exports go to China, its exports were very resilient. Indonesia, plus 4%, and particularly Brazil, plus 106% experienced export growth in 2020 despite the COVID-19 crisis. Malaysia, Cameroon, and the Philippines experienced double-digit percentage decreases, especially Malaysia, minus 33%, in 2020. Major flows of tropical sunwood in the world are dominated by the China-Thailand trade. China remains the major importer of tropical sunwood, 
and Thailand supplies 75% of the volume imported by China. Let's see now the major exporters of tropical plywood. Indonesia is the biggest exporter of tropical plywood in the world. Its exports level accelerated in 2017 and 18, but slowed down drastically then. It was strongly affected by the COVID-19 crisis, as its exports experienced a 22% decrease in 2020. Vietnam became the second biggest exporter of tropical plywood in the world, overtaking Malaysia for the first time ever. Despite the COVID-19 crisis, its exports surged by 32% in 2020. Its major markets are the USA and the Republic of Korea. Malaysia has seen its export of tropical plywood drastically reducing over the years. Over the last 10 years, its exports were divided by almost three. The overall decline has been in response to chronic supply shortages of raw material input, to the plywood mills and rising export prices, while demand and prices remain depressed in Japan, its major market. At its peak in 2006, Malaysian tropical plywood exports were roughly around 5.1 million cubic meters, while exports recorded in 2020 were around 1.3 million cubic meters. Indonesia, Vietnam and Malaysia combined accounted for 77% of the world exports of tropical plywood in 2020. What are the major importers of tropical plywood? The U.S. became the biggest importer of tropical plywood in 2020, overtaking Japan, the historical biggest importer of tropical plywood. The U.S. demand has become stronger over time, and in 2020, it imported more than twice the volume it imported in 2010. Japan's demand for tropical plywood has been declining over the last decade. In 2020, it imported 40% less than what it imported in 2010. Japan was the historical biggest importer of tropical plywood over the last 30 years. Back in 1990, it imported over 2.7 million cubic meters. In 2020, it imported just over 1.1 million cubic meters. The US and Japan demand combined represented 43% of the world total imports of tropical plywood. On this map, we can see that about 90% of the tropical plywood is produced in China and Southeast Asia, and then exported mainly to the US, Japan, the Republic of Korea, and the EU. Demand in the US has been accelerating strongly over the recent years. Japan, despite the stagnant and declining demand, still remains a major consumer of tropical plywood. On this summary table, we can see that tropical primary wood products are mainly produced, exchanged, and consumed in the Asia-Pacific region. Notable exceptions are in the trade in tropical roundwood, in which the African and the Latin American regions are also participating, as they export most of their tropical logs and sunwood to the Asia-Pacific region. Another exception is the imports of trop tropical plywood, where the rest of the world, mainly the US and the European Union, import 48% of the world total tropical plywood. Let's see now the major tropical exporters of furniture from 2010 to 2020. Vietnam is the biggest tropical exporter of furniture in the world. Its exports represent 50% of all tropical exports of furniture, and its exports have almost tripled over the last 10 years. In 2020, it exported for over $10 billion of furniture, and its export increased by an additional 15% between 2019 and 2020, despite the COVID-19 crisis, as it has been advantaged by the China-USA trade dispute. There has also been a trend towards outward investment by processors operating in China to Southeast Asia, particularly Vietnam, to avoid US tariffs and lower their production costs. Overall, the COVID-19 crisis got fewer impacts on the tropical furniture exports than on the primary wood products. On this map, we can see that the US is the major destination for Vietnamese and Chinese wood furniture exports, although China has been targeting other markets such as the EU and the Middle East. 
For the first time ever, Vietnamese exports of furniture overtook the Chinese exports of furniture to the US. Chinese exports declined strongly by a third in 2020, while exports of furniture from Vietnam boomed by 27%. Vietnamese exports of furniture to the U.S. have been multiplied by three in 10 years. What are the factors affecting the trade and the production of tropical primary wood products? In my opinion, there are three main factors affecting the trade and the production of tropical primary wood products. First of all, the economic factor. We saw that the economic crisis strongly impacted demand for tropical primary wood products as construction rate can decline during economic crisis, and this affects the demand for raw material, for example. The second factor is the legality issue, enforcement of lock ban, and the exhaustion of the resources. Necessarily, this impacts the supply of raw material. Finally, the third factor is the competitiveness and the possible replacement of tropical products by non-tropical products or non-wood products. This necessarily has an impact on the long run. One country's demand for tropical logs has been affected by these three factors at the same time. This is Japan. In this Nikkei Asia article, it was explained why the demand for tropical logs in Japan could be null in the future. The article related to the story of Daishin Wood Industries, a major importer of tropical logs which went out of business in 2021. It related the difficulties that the company faced to get tropical logs after the Malaysian state of Sabah log ban. The company had to rely on PNG to get its tropical logs. Nevertheless, PNG raised its export tariffs in the meantime and even considered to implement a log ban of 50% in 2025. Due to the exhaustion of the resources, the average log diameter has reduced from 80 cm to 60 cm, decreasing the rate of yield per log. In the meantime, home builders and interior decorators have also shifted to agglomerate panels and non-timber products. There was also a move by the plywood makers to use now timber that grows in Japan, like cedars. Domestic production of plywood and sandwood made of domestic timber increased strongly over the recent years. All these factors generated a strong decline for the Japanese demand of tropical logs and tropical products in general over the recent years. If you wish to complement this presentation, the use of ITTO statistical publications can be a good resource for research. One of the major ITTO publications is the ITTO Market Information Service, the MIS, which is monitoring and reporting in real time, and it is published every two weeks, available, freely available on our website. The second publication, statistical publication, is the biannual review and assessment of the World Timber Situation 2019-2020, which will be soon released in July 2021. Finally, there is the online statistical database, where you get production and trade time series of primary and secondary wood products since 1990. It is updated twice a year. This concludes my presentation that I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments to be made or any questions, please feel free to send me an email. My email address is on this slide. I wish to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.